Dit is Marieke van Meijeren van de Bewustzijnschool uit Amsterdam. Dit is weer een nieuwe aflevering van de podcast die jij in heel Nederland kan luisteren vanuit je stoel, vanuit de trein, vanuit het vliegtuig, waar je dan ook maar bent. Om jou de tools en tips en tricks, inspiratie, informatie en extraordinary kennis te geven, zodat jij het leven kan leiden en het leven kan vormgeven zoals jij het optimaal voor jezelf voor ogen hebt. Want dat is immers de bedoeling. Hi everyone. I am Maike and welcome to this podcast. The last time I spoke about breaking through the loop of fear. I talked about how this mind-driven fear affects the way we approach ourselves and others. I also introduced RAIN, a Buddhist technique with which we can learn to reflect on these mind-driven coping methods that hold us back. The four letters refer to four steps. Recognize, allow, investigate and nurture. Where RAIN is very much focused on reflecting and loving kindness, in this podcast I like to dive more into how we can make sustainable changes in our life and to really start living our highest potential. Because changing habits or shifting thoughts are most often the biggest obstacles. We read a lot of spiritual books, listen to inspiring podcasts, practice yoga, meditation, so in theory we know how it works. But transferring this into a daily practice, a commitment to an adjustment in our lifestyle, is often where we get stuck. Letting go of deep-rooted beliefs, patterns and anxieties that hinder us in getting that job that brings us joy, that romantic love or that self-confidence to actually go out and show ourselves to the world. So how do we convert that anxiety and doubt into trust and action? How do we allow ourselves to be guided by opportunities instead of obstacles? Let's take this in four steps again. The first one is reflection. All that is ever achieved started with reflection. We need to make a blueprint to be able to clearly see what serves us and what doesn't. Which people serve us and which don't. A blueprint of behavior and how this relates to our emotional body and actions. So go through the main aspects of your life. What or whom suck all the energy out of you, leaving you exhausted and empty? And what or whom brings you an uplifted feeling, excitement? Obviously, we want more of the uplifting kind of activities and people in our lives. So get this very clear. Figure out what brings you joy and fulfillment. What do you want to attract more of? And what can you live without? An easy exercise to get this clear is to actually rate how much energy you gain from activities and people. Keep track of it each day for one week and give every activity a rating between 1 and 10 in terms of energy, fulfillment, joy or whatever resonates with you. Another way is to write down three things that uplifted you at every end of the day. Things that you are grateful for. And three things that held you back which brought you negative energy or just no joy. The second step is an automatic consequence of the first one. Once we start clearing away what doesn't give us this uplifting energy, we are creating space within ourselves. And space happens to be the second step because this is what you want. Lots of space. Why? Because space equals creativity and resilience. The ability to think and feel clear. To fully to be fully present in this moment. You want to actively create as much space as as possible in your mental, spiritual, physical and energetic body. So besides mentally reflecting, here's what you can do to work more in your physical and energetic space. Start with creating more space in your body by movement. Very important to get the energy within you flowing, because only in a relaxed body the mind can settle. 
Make sure you give attention to your whole body, from head to toe and everything in between. Dive into your body and move with it. How does it feel? Where does it feel open? Where does it feel tense? Really pay attention. Therefore, I recommend to work with slow movements. Try, for example, yin yoga or restorative yoga. At my yoga school, they also teach some beautiful slow-paced vinyasa classes in which being mindful of your movement together with your breath is truly the main practice. And if you're not very much into yoga, try intuitive walking um, or qigong. And the good news is that to gain that space in your body, you don't always actually have to move. You don't have to make the effort yourself. Sounds good, right? So go to see a shiatsu therapist or an acupuncturist, an energy worker. Especially if you feel tired on a deep level at this moment of your life, start with these more passive methods and see what they can do for you. So there are many ways to open up your body and to get that energy, that, that chi flowing. Find what works for you and be gentle with yourself. It, it is not easy to suddenly slow down and give in when you are used to keep on running. Getting rid of old patterns and tensions by working with the energies within takes time. Your body and mind need, need time to absorb it and to adjust. So be patient and try to enjoy the ride by not trying to get somewhere. No expectations. I remember a metaphor I once read. It says that when you start working on yourself, on your, your four bodies, um, the mental, the spiritual, the energetic and the physical level, it is like changing a baking, a cleaning a baking pan. A very dirty baking pan with all these greasy food remains firmly stuck to the sides. And once you start pouring the water in to clean it, at first it becomes an even bigger mess. The water becomes pitch black and all these chunks floating around and it smells. But then when you put some effort in it, the shiny clean parts start to appear. And slowly, slowly the, the pan starts to blink again, fully ready to create a brand new, wonderful, sweet and tasty dish. So be true and kind in the process. What do you need? What serves your body the best? And don't forget to take rest when needed. Okay, we know what serves us. We created a lot of space. Now it's time for action. And this is the part where we might get really uncomfortable. Again, happy and energetic though, but uncomfortable. Because when you start to acknowledge yourself with your mind's eye, it, it most often means that you have to pull yourself out of your comfort zone to actually carry out the true you. This is why action is the crucial part when you, you, when you want to start living your highest potential. You can reflect, move and learn on a mind's level as much as you want. But if you lack on the action part, there won't be any shifts in your life. So learn the language of your heart. Listen. Don't try to ignore her stories because she will keep on bringing bringing it up to you until you fully get it, until you trust and acknowledge. Not an easy road, but the only road to freedom and connection. This is when we start to create. This is where you, where you allow your inner wisdom to guide you, to attract the life you, you long for. So let's give it a go with a short meditation. Close your eyes for a moment. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Sit up tall with an open chest and fully arrive in this moment. Feel your feet firmly on the ground, your sit bones on the chair. Now breathe in for four, two, three, four. Hold for four, two, three, four. And breathe out for eight, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight. Do this two more times in your own pace. Now think for yourself, if I could do or be everything I wanted, what would my life look like? Who would I be? What kind of job would I have? What would my relationships look like? Where would you live? How would you feel? And how would you act? Don't be distracted by this little voice that might say, you will ne never achieve this anyway. Ignore this voice and also try not to think in short terms. I mean, lying on the beach on a tropical island might seem awesome, but not forever. It won't satisfy your soul because us people want to feel useful in the end and only doing nothing is not the way to achieve it. We want to have a purpose, so we can feel fulfilled. And if you, ha you are having trouble finding your purpose, thinking, think about what made you feel happy when you were young. How did you spend your days? And also think about what you enjoy now. Who do you like spending time with? With who can you be fully yourself? Who inspires you? The things and people that fulfill you are the guidelines to your purpose. Take a moment to imagine the life you want to create for yourself. Now slowly open your eyes and come back to the room you are in. Maybe you want to pause this recording for a few more moments to stay in this process or you can come back to it later. It is a good idea to outline the life you want to, to create on paper by drawing it or writing it in words. Be specific and know that everything is possible also for you. Don't hold back in what you wish for. So now we know what kind of life we want to create, how we want to feel, it is time to mirror it to the life we actually have. Look at the fronts that are not in line yet. Those are the fronts that we need to take action on. You probably know the principle of the universal law of attraction. What it basically says is pay attention to your goals, your ultimate life and visualize it as, it, as if it is already the reality. Focus on positive thoughts, on possibilities, on abundance. Get yourself on these high frequencies and all will come to you. The law of attraction is a very powerful practice if you want to start living your highest potential. But here is why the law of attraction fails for so sometimes. We stick to the wishing part. Yes, all will come to you, but you must actively carry it out. There is a reason that the word action is part of the word attraction. Create circumstances with as many things that fulfill you. That is the action within the attraction. And this we have to do ourselves. But what happens when, you, when we are not aligned and feeling resistance, we do the contrary. We say, I really want a new job, a romantic relationship. I want to feel good. But we make excuses at the same time, how this is not for us or how now is not the time. 
we want it to be already there without changing a thing, without doing the effort. Because change makes us feel unstable and we like safety. So we end up carrying out the contrary of what we desire into the universe with our thoughts or words or actions. We make ourselves smaller than we are. And our life is driven by the mind-driven fear I talked about earlier. Instead of our intuition or inner wisdom or higher self. So become aware of these patterns within you and play with them. See them and say, I can hear you. I can feel you. I recognize it. But I choose to ignore it because I know these patterns are holding me back from living my highest potential. I actively choose for love and trust now. With all of your being, send out what you want to create in life. Think big but start small. You don't want to make shifts on every aspect in your life at once. Keep focused and really start to feel and carry out your desires from inside out. This might take some time and effort and practice, but once you are aligned with your true desires, the universe will pick it up and things will start flowing towards you. Now the last, the last step is repetition, an ongoing repetition of the three steps I mentioned before. Reflection, creating space and taking action. Life is an ongoing process. Everything changes all the time. This is why these steps are not a one-time effort. And this is very important. It is a devotion to living the life de you desire. A devotion to your beautiful soul and highest potential. So my advice is to look yourself in the eyes in the mirrors once a week and say to yourself, I live my life exactly the way I want to live it. I am true to my heart. Now notice how this makes you feel. We have this very beautiful gift that we cannot lie to ourselves without feeling it. So are these words you speak true for you in this moment? Are you still in alignment or did you pick up an old habit somewhere along the way? Which is, which is totally fine. It happens all the time to everyone. But now you see it, you can make the effort to change it again, to align yourself, to take responsibility for your own happiness. And don't get demotivated now. I know you want to go through these steps once for all aspects of your life and be like, great, settle this. Let's go living a life in which everything is always good, right? But let me tell you one thing. Even the most enlightened persons on this planet experiences darker times and need to reflect upon themselves. Don't see the darkness as something you want to get rid of, but as a signal that something is just not quite aligned at the moment. See it as a chance to grow. Dive into it. Let go of how everything should be and open up to the adventure that we call life. Enjoy the ride. You can do it. I am Micah and thank you so much for listening.